Wyan let out a quiet sigh as she slipped her books into her bag hearing her mobile that alarm goes off means it's off time, finally, the day was over. Three hours of being hunched over her assignments in the library, her back dot felt like it was on fire. She slung her bag over her shoulder, rubbing her sore neck as she made her dot way to the exit, her eyes focused on the floor. Home. She couldn't wait to get home. She was craving something warm and comforting, something that felt like home. Kimchi, she thought, smiling a little. A bowl of warm rice, kimchi on the side, her stomach rumbled at the thought, reminding her she hadn't eaten in hours. Maybe she'd even stop by the convenience store on the way home to grab some dot soju. That would be perfect. She could already picture herself sinking into her dot chair with the food in front of her. Heaven. And then she would write on her journal. Or maybe, if she was feeling lazy, that she could skip the writing and put on a movie instead. Perfect. But her peaceful plans were suddenly shattered. Thud. That she was slammed into the lockers, her breath knocked right out of her chest. She gasped, clutching her shoulder, barely able to process what was happening. Before a group of familiar faces surrounded her, sneering. Well, look who we have here, one of the girls sneered. Nina, she had remembered all of their voices by now. Where you were sneaking off, nerdy. You really thought you could avoid us? Wyan gained her balance back, her hand reaching for the lockers to steady herself but the sharp pain in her ribs made her wince, fuck percent ing animals. I, I was not sneaking. She tried to speak, but one of them sneered yanking her dot bag off her shoulder, spilling her books and notes onto the floor. Another shoved at her hard, forcing her back against the cold metal lockers, look at this pathetic little nerd. Think you can just walk out of here without doing our work? Another girl shoved a stack of messy notes into her hands, slamming them against at her chest so hard it made her flinch. Finish this for me by tomorrow. She swallowed hard, clutching the pile of papers, wishing she could just dot disappear. Or you're gonna regret it. Not like you have anything better to do anyway, but right nerdy, she hissed. Wyan blinked up, trying to adjust her glasses, only for one of the boys to snatch them off her face, laughing as he threw them on the ground and um step on it. The sound dot of her glasses shattering made her stomach sink. Those were her only pair. She barely had a moment to react before someone smacked her hard on the dot back of her head. Pathetic. Don't you get tired living like this? Don't you get tired of bullying? Must be a sad life if this is all you have. Wyand mumbled under her breath her skull throbbing. The words barely left her lips when she felt a rough hand wrap around her neck, but choking her, fingers digging painfully into her skin. Panicked, her hand stopped instinctively reaching up to claw at his grip, but he only tightened it, you little rat, he spat, leaning in close, his voice filthy and cruel. I could end at you right now. She struggled, gasping for air, her vision starting to blur. Her chest felt tight, but her heart pounding faster as she tried to breathe, what the hell do you think you're doing, the rough voice came, startling all of dot them. They turned, sneering even as they realized who it was. Stay out of this, but John, one of them said. This is none of your business. His gaze fixed on the boy's hand still wrapped around Wyan's neck. Let her go, dot right. Now. Why are you defending her, John? This little nobody isn't worth your time, the dot girl sneered crossing her arms. You've got better things to pay attention to, but don't you? Get your hands off her, he hissed narrowing his eyes, ignoring the girl remarks, or I'll make sure you can't use them again. Trust me, you know what I'm capable dot of. Don't you? Everyone knew Jungkook's temper, knew he was someone who didn't make the idle threats. One of the girls reached out, grabbing her friend's shoulder, but whispering, come on, let's go. It's not worth it. Finally, the boy let go of Yan, shoving her roughly as he released his grip. She fell to dot the ground, gasping, her hand going to her throat where red marks were already at starting to form. Once they all were out of sight he walked towards the struggling girl and knelt down beside her. You okay, he asked rubbing her back. What, W water, please, she managed to choke out. Jungkook quickly noticed her water bottle lying on the ground nearby, probably had fallen out of her bag during the scuffle. He picked it up, twisted off the cap, and held it out to her. Here, drink slowly. 
he held it near her lips, his other hand cradling her head. Her hands trembled, too weak to hold the bottle herself, so she let him help, his dot strong arm steady as he tilted it just enough for her to sip. The liquid felt like a dot lifeline, soothing her dry throat as she swallowed, her eyes closing briefly. Her breathing began to even out. Do you need more? Jungkook asked, noticing how she was still catching her dot breath, she shook her head slightly, so he closed the cap of the bottle and set it down. Come on, now. Get up, standing up and holding out his hand to her. She paused, glancing up at his outstretched hand, hesitant but too exhausted dot to argue. Slowly, she placed her hand in his, his warm hands curling around her as dot he helped her to her feet, once she was steady on her feet, he bent down to gather her things. Her dot books and scattered notes. He picked them up one by one, slipping them carefully back into her bag. Once dot everything was packed, he handed the bag back to her, that group, have they done this to you before? YN lips pressed together. Yeah, because they just don't have anything better dot to do. He didn't push her further, simply giving a nod. She started glancing around the dot floor, scanning the area. What are you looking for? Jungkook asked, watching her with a raised eyebrow. My glasses, she replied, embarrassment coloring her cheeks. She was dot practically blind without them. Jungkook took a look around, quickly spotting the broken remains near the lockers. Dot he bent down and picked up what was left of the lenses and the twisted frame, but holding it up for her to see. Do you have another pair, he asked, noticing just how damaged these were? Yan shook her head, sighing. No, this was my last pair, she said, sounding dot defeated. I do have contacts, but... He nodded, how far's your place, he asked, slipping the broken glasses into dot his jacket pocket. Ten minutes, by foot. All right, let's go. Yan blinked, a little taken aback. W where are we going? Your home, he said simply. She shook her head. I, I can walk on my own. Really? Jungkook raised an eyebrow, by the look of things, I'm guessing you've got that pretty bad eyesight. Hmm. What if you end up in the wrong neighborhood? Her cheeks heated up, my eyesight's not that bad. Sure, he said, not sounding convinced in the slightest. Without another word, he started walking, and after a second she followed. They walked side by side in silence, not a word passing between them, after walking for at least seven minutes they took another turn, he slowed it down, looking puzzled. Are you, sure this is the route, to your house? Yan nodded, glancing up at him. Yes. I know where I live. He raised an eyebrow, still as they continued walking. But after a few more dot steps, he asked again, are you really sure? She frowned, stopping in her tracks. Why are you asking me that again and dot again? This is my route. I take it every day. Jungkook just gave her a strange look, but didn't say another word, though that she could tell he still wasn't convinced. Finally, they reached her street, and she dot pointed to the familiar house in front of them. This is my house. Jungkook blinked, looking between her and the house, you're kidding me. She tilted her head, what? Why are you looking at me like that? How come we're neighbors, and I didn't know? She blinked, suddenly feeling a bit awkward. Well? I don't know. Wait, so you knew we were neighbors, all this time? I? I mean, yeah. I've seen you a couple of times, leaving your house for dot university and stuff, she admitted, her cheeks growing warm under his dot gaze. So? Yeah, how come I never saw you? And, you didn't tell me either. Yan lowered her gaze, her fingers nervously fiddling with the hem of her skirt, I don't think it mattered. I mean, why would anyone be happy about being that neighbors with me? What makes you say that, he asked furrowing his brows further. She shrugged, people usually don't notice me. And if they do, it's not, well, not in a good way. Jungkook, you shouldn't care so much about what people think. Most of the dot time, they don't know what they're talking about. Yan sighed, looking off to the side. I don't really care what people think, she dot mumbled under her breath. One day, they'll be at my mercy. What was that, he asked tilting his head, raising an eyebrow. 
She looked at him shaking her head, nothing, just thinking out loud. He nodded, letting it go. You should go inside now, stepping back he gestured toward her front door. Yan sighed, opening her door, but then paused, glancing back at him. Thank dot you. For what? She swallowed, fidgeting with her fingers. For today, for saving me. For dot standing up for M me. You don't need to thank me for that. No one deserves what they did to you. She managed a small smile, her gaze meeting his for a brief moment before that she turned around and walked inside closing the door behind her. Jungkook locked his door, only to hear the soft creak of another door opening up beside him. He turned, surprised to see Yen coming out wearing headphone, lost in her own thoughts. It's been three days since the incident, and today is dot Saturday, finally the day off. He was planning to head out to buy some basic home necessities, but the sight of Yen distracted him, reminding him again how strange it was that he never knew that she was his neighbor all this time. But then again, it wasn't all that shocking. He was never been one to keep up dot with his neighbors, or anyone, really. He didn't enjoy people's company, he up preferred his own peace, away from the noise and unnecessary company. You going somewhere? Yin gaze snapped to him, startled, as if she didn't even realize he was, standing there. Um hi, Jungkook raised a brow, hello, where you headed? Oh, she mumbled, looking down at the ground before meeting his gaze dot again. I was, um, going to get new glasses. Dot he paused, should I come with you? Her eyes widened slightly, taken aback by his offer, oh, no, that's fine. You dot don't have to. It might take a while, you know? She didn't want to inconvenience him. He shrugged, it's no problem. It's not like I have anything planned today. Yan bit her lip, clearly debating his offer. His gaze drifted to her mouth, but watching as she tugged her lower lip between her teeth, an absent-minded that gesture that caught his attention more than he expected. She quickly released dot her lip, snapping him out of the moment. Okay, if, if you want to. He straightened, all right, let's go then. Walking beside Jungkook, it wasn't as awkward as Yan thought it would be. Because few days ago Jungkook didn't even know her presence, and now they are going to buy glasses on a random Saturday. It was surprising. So, what's your major? He asked casually. Psychology, she answered, tucking a stray hair behind her ear which dot annoying her. Interesting. I'm majoring in business management. She gave a small smile. I know. Jungkook raised a brow, giving her a sideways look. Seems like you know a lot more about me than I know about you. She shook her head instantly, there's nothing really special to know about me, but you, you were kind of the talk of the university last year. Everyone dot seems to, well, they all know who you are. Really? Yan nodded, everyone seems to fear you too. He let out a chuckle, shaking his head. That's an exaggeration. Don't you dot think? No, really. I mean, people were talking about you because of that incident. Her words instantly trailed off seeing his smile fading as his jaw tensed. He didn't dot say anything, just kept his gaze ahead. Yn, I'm. I'm sorry for bringing it up. I didn't mean to. Jungkook, it's fine. I don't really like to be reminded of that particular dot incident. Yn, I'm sorry I won't bring it up again. Jungkook, you don't need to apologize. She opened her mouth to say something but close it, the rest of the walk passed and not silence. The topic was sensitive for Jungkook. But almost everyone know the incident dot that happened year ago. Jungkook got into a fight with another student. Rumors spread like wildfire, but dot no one really knew what started it. Whatever the other boy had said or done, it dot was enough to make Jungkook lose all control. By the time students noticed, it was because Jungkook was already in the middle dot of pummeling him, mercilessly, without holding back. The boy underneath him dot was unconscious, his face bloody and bruised. Finally, security had to pull Jungkook off. Even then, he looked ready to keep dot going. Bloody hands, breath uneven, eyes dark. It was as if he was in a trance. After that, he was suspended for two weeks, 
and there were even charges filed that against him, though they were eventually dropped. But the rest of the story? No one knew what exactly triggered him. What dot happened no one really know. When they finally reached. Jungkook took a seat in the waiting area, watching as she spoke to the optometrist, who began asking questions about her eyesight dot and going over her prescription, after the doctor finished her eye exam and handed her the updated prescription, she was checking out some frames. She picked up a large, round, thick frame, trying it on and inspecting herself in dot the mirror. How is it? Really? Jungkook asked raising his eyebrow. Like if she was being serious. Yeah, why is there something wrong? It's cute. Cute? They're huge. I feel like I'm looking at a pair of glasses walking around dot with a person attached to them, he snorted, folding his arms as he watched dot her, she rolled her eyes, picking another frame that was only slightly smaller but dot still pretty oversized. What's wrong with liking big frames? They make me feel, secure, she dot muttered, trying not to look embarrassed, Jungkook, by secure, you mean they're big enough to hide behind? You're such a bully, you know that? He grinned, I'm just saying, at least pick a frame that suits you. Something dot that actually shows your face. She huffed, glancing back at the mirror. Fine, she said, picking up a smaller, the more streamlined frame and putting it on. Happy now? Hmm, they are okay. Anyways not like I'm going to buy my glasses according to your taste. She dot retorted back. Dot he chuckled, raising his hands, all right, all right. I get it, your face, your choice. She looked at her glasses with satisfied smile. But I wouldn't mind if you tell me which one do you like? He raised an eyebrow, amused by her change of heart. She was something else, that was for sure. This one. And I think this will suit you too. Yn looked down at the frame he'd picked. He has good taste, she thought, but surprised by his choice. Horrible choice. Instead she said turning to pay the money for glasses as dot she liked. Good that you aren't buying it. He said but she didn't turn around smiling dot to herself. As they walked down the grocery store, since he accompanied her, she was dot accompanying him too. That's how it goes. Jungkook was loading up his cart like a man on a mission. Yan trailed behind, thought a little baffled as she watched him toss items in without a second thought. Half of the cart was already full, and he didn't seem anywhere near finished, she noticed when he reached the ramen section, he didn't just pick one nut pack. No, he reached for a whole armful, pork-flavored, spicy beef, chicken, and even a couple of seafood ones. One, two, three, four packs went straight into the cart. Yan blinked, watching as dot he kept going. Five, six, seven. Uh. Are you having a party at home or something? Nope, he replied, tossing another pack in as if it were obvious. So, all of this, it's just for you? Of course, then they arrived at the soju section, and she raised an eyebrow as he began dot loading that up, too. There went a couple bottles of camisole, a pack of dot Jinro original, and even a few flavored ones, plum, peach, and apple. Six packs, lined up right next to his mountain of ramen, Yn, when you said you were going grocery shopping, you actually meant of stocking up on ramen and soju? Is this all you eat, like, day and night? He shrugged, I don't know a thing about cooking, so. Yeah, why complicate the things? Yn stifled a laugh, catching herself as he added a few more essentials to the dot cart, a carton of eggs, a loaf of bread, a pack of cheese slices. This was dot apparently what Jungkook considered a balanced diet. Yn, seriously, but you don't even know how to make anything other than instant noodles? He glanced at her with a raised eyebrow. Are you judging me? Who am I to judge? They moved further down the aisle, and Jungkook grabbed a packet of dot seaweed flavored chips, chucking it into the cart with the rest. She wrinkled dot her nose as she looked at it. Dot Yn, you actually like that flavor? Yep, he said, tossing a bag of honey butter flavored chips in four dot good measure. She pulled a face. Awful. I didn't think anyone actually liked seaweed flavor. He shot her a look, his lips curving into a smirk. Well, good thing I'm not dot buying groceries to suit your taste. 
He retorted, sounding like a child taking revenge, a kind of cheeky revenge, but for her earlier comments about his glasses choice, she rolled her eyes, but kept following him until he was done. This guy was a dot walking contradiction, but somehow, she found herself oddly entertained by dot it all. Wyan groaned, tossing her pen across the bed as she stared at the stack of papers she'd spent her entire weekend working on. How could teachers be so heartless? Piling on assignments like they had a grudge against weekends. She muttered under her breath, can't they have mercy on little students like us? Rubbing her tired eyes, she swung her legs off the bed, her stomach suddenly not reminding her it's been hours since last ate something. Heading toward the kitchen, she opened the fridge only to be met with. Emptiness. A single yogurt cup and some leftover takeout that looked too dot questionable to risk. She groaned again, closing the fridge with a sigh. Why n, should I just go out and grab a soju or something? Or do I just starve? She mumbled, trying to decide. But then a better idea hit her, and a sly grin dot made its way to her lips. Oh, time to pay my lovely neighbor a visit. She was knocking on his door, glancing around the quiet hallway as she waited. Exactly three minutes later, the door opened. The sight waiting for her was like a dream, a whole damn meal, fresh and wet. Jungkook stood there, shirtless, his skin still damp from a shower as he ran his hand through his wet hair. Wyan forced a smile swallowing down the inappropriate thoughts that crossed out her mind. Hi there, neighbor. Jungkook raised an eyebrow, what are you doing here? Not happy to see me, she teased it's getting normal, between the two of them, not waiting for an answer as she slipped past him, letting herself in like she'd owned the place. Jungkook let out a low sigh but closed the door behind her, following as she'd wandered into his kitchen, her eyes immediately scanning the counter's dot and fridge. She could feel his gaze on her, but she kept her cool. So, she began, glancing back at him, do you have any steak? I remember not seeing you buy some two weeks ago. So you were spying on my grocery? He asked, crossing his arms as he dot leaned against the counter. Hardly, she scoffed, giving him a quick glance. I just happen to have dot a good memory. Not my fault you stock up things like it's apocalypse. He rolled his eyes, I might have a steak or two in the fridge somewhere. But dot what's with all the questions? Are you planning to cook? I was considering it, she said, opening the fridge to peek inside. But something caught her attention on the sofa, there's was dark shirt, and tight jeans. Something that would cling just right to his chest and thighs. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, club night. You? Going to a club? Thought you didn't like those places. He furrowed his brows, how you know that? You told me, genius. Bad memory, or what? Jungkook blinked not really remembering that he told her, but shrugged maybe and it slipped his mind. Jungkook, guess I did. Well, it's a high school friend reunion thing. They da dragged me into it, and, apparently, I have to go. Sounds. Exciting, she replied with a sarcastically. And here I was, planning to make steak and maybe invite you to join me, but don't know, you have other plans. He paused, his gaze staying on her a little longer than usual. Trust me, if it don't were up to me, I'd rather stay here. But this one's kinda mandatory. Sure, sure. When are you leaving, dot Jungkook, in about 30 minutes? Why, you timing me? Why n, actually, I was wondering if you'd let me use your kitchen. My fridge is dot depressingly empty. So we could eat together only if you want of course. Jungkook looked a bit surprised at her request, but didn't seem to mind the idea. You can use it. Just don't break anything. Please. I'm not you. Very funny, he straightened, gathering his clothes and walking toward his dot bedroom. Her gaze follow, watching the muscles in his back shift, what a dot sight. But soon he disappeared behind the door. Leaning against his chair, Jungkook was counting minutes, wondering how dot long he have to endure this reunion before it'd be okay to slip away. Maybe half an hour more. Just bear it Jungkook just bear it. His phone buzzed in his pocket and he pulled it out surprised to see YN message. Big glasses. I stole two packs of ramen on my way out, 
oh, and a few bags of dot chips. They were delicious. A small smile formed on his lips, so my neighbor is a thief now too? Big glasses, nope. Big glasses, you're paying the price for not noticing your neighbor for, what, almost two years? Right, paying the price, he replied, grinning as he pictured her stuffing chips into her mouth. Big glasses, oh, you better believe it. This is only the beginning. I'll tag along that next time you go grocery shopping, too. Bold of you to assume you're allowed on grocery trips. Big glasses, bold of you to assume you could stop me. Listen, I usually shop enough groceries to last two months. So, I'll see you. Never. He thought she might give up, but of course, she didn't. Big glasses, two months. You are bedworm. He grinned. This girl. She was something else. And somehow, he didn't mind. A few seconds later, another text popped up. Big glasses, so, you having fun at this party? He rolled his eyes, typing back quickly. Oh, yeah, having the time of my life. Can't stop dancing, so much fun. Suddenly a hand touched his shoulder. He looked up to see a girl with bright red lipstick and dressed in a tight dress, giving him a wide smile. Jungkook. Oh my god, it's been so long, she practically squealed, draping that herself against his shoulder, Jungkook blinked, now who the hell is she? Uh, yeah. Hey, there, he mumbled, shifting uncomfortably as her hand stayed on his shoulder, fingers tracing lightly. So, how have you been, she asked, her voice too close to his ear as she leaned in, laughing a little too loudly at, well, nothing, fine, he replied shortly, shifting away slightly. His phone buzzed again, and he glanced down to see another text from YN. YN. Ah. Uh. Did I hear detect sarcasm? He smirked, starting to type back, of course someone get me out of here please. So, do you remember me, she asked, batting her eyelashes at him. No. He wanted to say. Because he do remember her face, but name. Nope, absolutely no idea. Yeah. Uh, from high school, right? What a stupid assumption of course it's a high school reunion. Right, she beamed, inching closer. We were in the same chemistry class. He gave her a stiff nod. Yeah, chemistry. Right. She kept talking, he glanced back down at his phone, focusing back on the dot message. But there was no reply to his messages she left him on scene. Are you single? Well that caught him off guard. No. Now if you excuse me, he said standing up from his chair and heading toward a quieter corner. You left me on scene, he complained. Scene. But she didn't reply. Strange. A hand tapped his shoulder. And here we go again. He thought he got rid of dot that leech. Hey, I'm talking to you. You could at least leave your phone alone while I'm dot here, she snapped, her tone suddenly bossy. He stopped, narrowing his eyes. Who did she think she was, ordering him around dot like that? Excuse me, he said, folding his arms over his chest, she rolled her eyes, a bit too dramatically. Look, Jungkook, since you're acting all clueless and ignoring my hints, let me just be clear, she said, pressing her dot hand flat against his chest like she was claiming her spot there. I want you to dot dance with me. He glanced down at her hand, then looked back at her, clicking his teeth together. Dot don't hit. Don't hit. Calm down. Deep breaths. He removed her hand of his chest, since you don't get hints easily let me clear dot it for you. I am. Not. Interested. Oh, come on, she said, don't be such a killjoy. Just one dance won't kill dot you. She stumbled on her heel, loosing all her balance, he just act on his instinct dot placing his hand on her shoulder to steady her, only for a moment. But she really took the chance brushing her lips against his. The strong scent of alcohol hit him dot immediately, and he knew she was way past tipsy. He quickly pushed her back, not caring if she hit her head on the wall or fall dot in some dumpster. Woman, are you out of your mind? 
He yelled out rubbing his mouth harshly, got annoyed and disgusted by the taste of her lipstick and alcohol. She blinked, looking startled, what? It was just a kiss. Don't act so uptight. Oh she was clearly getting on his nerves. Go find someone else to throw yourself, he spat and walked away, slipping his dot phone back into his pocket, and headed straight inside. Dot he had enough of this stupid party, the noise, and most of all, the people. It was well past midnight, maybe even closer to dawn. And he was knocking on Dot the door on his door obviously too drunk to realize that it wasn't his. He leaned Dot against it. Finally, the door opened, and he stumbled forward, nearly losing his footing not entirely. But something stopped him from falling face first, no, someone. Small hands held him up. Guck, she asked, her voice thick with sleep. Why are you here at this hour? He gave her a lopsided grin a high, that he turned and wrapped his arms around her, letting his full weight fall into her dot hold. She stumbled back, but managed to balance him. How much have you drink? A dot he blinked, I, don't know. She sighed, God, you're heavy, still she somehow managed to drag him inside. And then she threw him onto something soft, her bed, he guessed. Dot he sank into it, letting out a small groan as he sprawled there. Why, why are you in my house, he muttered, barely able to piece together his dot words, she folded her arms, raising an eyebrow. It's my house. He blinked, his gaze drifting up to the ceiling. Now that she mentioned it, he yet didn't recognize the ceiling, which had tiny glow-in-the-dark stars stuck across dot it. His place definitely didn't have anything like that. Oh, dot. From that I remember you left me on scene, dot. I fall asleep while texting you, dot. How rude. You acting like you were waiting for it. What if I say I was? He heard her snorted at that. He then felt the faintest tug at his ankle, and his dot whole body stiffened slightly, as she started to slip off his shoes, her fingers dot carefully undoing the laces before pulling each one off. Uh. Thanks a dot. No need to thank I just don't want you to ruin my mattress that's all. He grumbled tugging at his shirt with an annoyed sigh. I hate these dot clothes, he mumbled, scrunching up his nose. Don't even think about asking me to help change you. I'm way too tired dot for that, and I'll throw you right back out into the hall if you try. He let out a low chuckle eyes barely open, but he grinned, you could just, but sleep with me. Yeah, sure. Not happening. She turned to walk back to the chair, he squinted point one eye open, catching sight of her. Her hair was messy, she was wearing these dot tiny shorts, and a thin top that hugged her frame, the room was suddenly getting warmer. He swore he caught a glimpse of some ink on her. Was that, a tattoo? Maybe to more than one. Or was that light shade? Whatever it was he was too drunk to think about it. He would ask her tomorrow if he remember it. He opened his eyes a little more, seeing her hovering above him covering him dot with blanket. Good night. Those were the last words he heard before everything black out. The next morning Jungkook eyes open, because of throbbing head, the dot kind he knew would come after how recklessly he drank last night. He sat up slowly, wincing as he rubbed his forehead, eyes adjusting to the dot unfamiliar room around him. Wait, this place, his eyes went wide. No, don't tell me, that he looked down, double-checking his clothes, then glanced around, almost dot afraid he'd find some girl he couldn't remember. But, thankfully, he was dot alone. Just as he exhaled, relieved. He sat up slowly, shoving the blanket aside and dragged himself to the kitchen. Rounding the corner, he stopped, his eyes landing on Yan at the stove, a dot small smile on her face as she flipped something in a pan. Good morning. She greeted him cheerfully, dot his brows furrowed. How, how did I end up here? Yan shrugged, pouring something into a mug. You don't remember? You dot showed up drunk at my door and crashed here for the night. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I didn't disturb you too dot much, did I? Nope, maybe a little, but I handle it, she teased, setting a plate down on dot the counter. I made breakfast. You want to join before we head to university? Yeah, sure. Let me take a shower and change first. Be right back. 
He stumbled out and back to his apartment. Pulling out his keys, unlocking dot the door. But as soon as he stepped inside, his body froze, his eyes widening in dot horror. Suddenly getting his senses back. Everything was a mess. No, no, no. His living room was wrecked. Shattered vases, plates broken. Furniture was dot knocked over, drawers open with their contents dumped out. What the hell happened? He dashed to his bedroom, but aside from a few scattered items, it was dot untouched. Quickly, he checked the other rooms, searching for any sign that someone might still be there. Empty. His gaze drifted to the counter, where a small box was, neatly placed, almost dot mocking him in its simplicity. He didn't remember anything about a dot package. Or putting anything there. Slowly, he approached it, reaching out and ripping off the paper. He lifted the dot lid, bracing himself. But nothing could have prepared him for what he saw, the box slipped from his hand, clattering to the floor as he stumbled back, bile that rising in his throat. Blood-soaked clothes, crumpled and dark red, was inside, the metallic scent dot twisting his stomach. No, 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 not again. Please, not again. He thought he left this behind, buried it in the past where it belonged. He done everything to keep his life clean, to put distance between himself and, that. No. But here it was, staring back at him like a nightmare come to life. He picked up the edge of one of the bloody pieces with tongs, careful not to dot leave fingerprints. Like he'd done this many times before. His eyes fell on a small, white note tucked inside the box, and he felt the dot world tilt. You like testing me, don't you? Let someone touch you again, and next time, it dot won't be just blood on your doorstep. Remember that. Missed me Bambi. His blood freezing in his veins.